Okay, today we're going to talk about how to make a digital escape room. So what's a digital escape room? Essentially, it's an online platform that allows students to solve puzzles, riddles, use hints and clues in order to unlock the objective that the teacher has set for them. You can give students a certain amount of time that they can escape and also give them hints and clues to help them escape the room by using a variety of methods that's provided by the teacher. Now, it does take time to create this, so make sure you allow yourself enough time to plan ahead. But once you get started, you and your students will love it. So first thing is come up with a plan. You need to come up with an idea and decide on how you're gonna work the plan. Think with the end in mind. Make sure you address the following items. What do your students need to know or review? Which of the 21st century skills do you want them to be able to complete? If your students are not able to escape the room, what tools would you have in place to assist them? Make sure the activities that you come up with are short and can be done in a allotted time span. Each activity should be around 10 minutes each. Decide whether you want each activity to lead to a website, a code, or a clue. Then decide on the difficulty level. Now, to, now, here are a couple of ways that you can actually set it up. You can use text. You can have students to decode a question and then have them answer it. For example, come up with a list of questions, let's say 10, on a document. Once you come up with those questions, go ahead and copy it and then paste it on another sheet and change the font to symbols. Once you've done that, make sure that you give the students a copy of the symbols sheet so they can decode what the actual letters stand for. Another way you can do it is you can create clues within the text. So it can be bold, it can be capital, underline, or color. And with this, you can actually have them decode with using the colors. So in this case, I have U-R-O-N-F-F, -F, and that's actually runoff. And then I did the same thing here, except I made the words bold. And then here, I just capitalized those same letters. You can also use outside resources. So you can use videos and have students to answer questions that'll actually lead them to clues. So let's say for example, you have a student to watch a video. After you watch a video or they could read an article, you can actually have them answer multiple choice questions. Once they answer the multiple choice questions, their answers will go in these boxes. Now, it's your choice on whether you wanna put the boxes in order or not. Um, but if you want them to have the code, then you can always put it in order for them. Again, this is just based on what you feel the difficulty level should be. In your planning, your steps depend on the amount of time you have your students for. So step one, what do you want the students to know? So for example, I want them to watch a video on the water cycle and answer the questions to get a code for Google Sites. So that video on the water cycle may be specifically just what are the actual steps in the water cycle. And once they answer the questions, then I want them to get a code to enter into Google Sites. So once they finish watching the video, answering the questions, where is that going to take them? So it would take the students to the Google site to unlock the code to submit for a correct answer. Again, you would do this for each mini activity that you have planned. So the next step, step two, again, what do you want your students to know? So in this scenario, I would want my students to click on a picture on a Google site that will link them to an article to read. Once they read the article, they're going to understand that the sun is the power source behind the water cycle. So once they finish, where will it take them? Students will use the color letters to decode the answer to submit onto a Google site. Again, planning each activity as you go along. You can design your escape room with the following things. You'll, you can use Google Sites. That will be your actual escape room. Use Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Drawing. All of these will help you to be able to create questions and answers and also allow you to hide clues and links and things that the students will actually use in order to figure out if they have mastered the concept or not.
So the way you will create your Google Sites is you will go to the Google Sites page. You can locate this from your drive. You're going to give it a title and an image, rules, storyline, timers, activities, anything that relates to the escape room. Set up a folder in Google Drive to put all of your information in. If you notice, you'll click on Drive and you'll click on that plus key or new and click on more. It will give you the options for Google Sites. So when you first pull it up, this is how your page will look. The good part about it is that it's pretty much a blank slate, but it's formatted for you. So all you have to do is input exactly what you need. Your menu is going to be on the right hand side. You have your insert, your pages, and your theme. So this is your menu bar and their options. You can change your layout and add files just from this folder. So under insert, you can add text, images, embed a code, or something directly from Google Drive. Here are your layout options. And below your layout, here are more choices that you can add to your Google site. So under pages, this is where you can add your links and additional pages. So let's say you don't want just a home page, but maybe you want a home page and about page. You can add this all here. So you would click here to add the link and here to add a page. And you can also change the color of your background under themes. So if you don't have a picture already, or if you have a picture and you want to make it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, this is where you would choose your options and then your font styles available. So to choose your layout, you would just simply click on one of the images here and the plus key allows you to either upload, select, pull from Drive, YouTube, Calendar, or even a map. Once you go here, you can add images and the links to other documents. You would just click on that document twice and or click on your picture or whatever you've uploaded twice and then you should get this menu option here and this will allow you to um, crop uncrop attach a link or delete so then you can start adding your activity you can use forms to have students submit the codes to move to the next section and get the correct answers so for example, if I want my students to put in a number, a specific number, I would change my form to short answer and then click required for each section to make sure that they can't skip over it. Once you click on the three dots, this gives you the option for description or validation. And I would click response validation and then put in number. And then you can also change this to uh, equal to because I want it to be specific for a certain correct answer. Now make sure that when you're creating your form also you have an option for the students to actually put their name in otherwise you're not going to know who actually completed the activity. So once you put in your answer you can actually allow it to give you a message too. So here I have number and then I have equal to and then try again is my message, letting them know this isn't the correct answer, try it once more. Once you've put all of your information in, you will actually publish your escape room. So you can change the name of your room. Once you publish it, you can change the settings to make it either public or private. I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, you can always leave me a comment. Have a great day.